My name is Colin Doyle. I'm a product manager here at FMS specifically for the new AVI product. AVI stands for Automatic Vehicle Identification. The five main pieces of the AVI system are the VIZ, the RFN, the TAG, the VID unit, and the GOS GPS unit. Uh, driver fuel is just like any other fueling interaction you'd have at a gas station. They get out of their car, put the nozzle in, and everything's automatic from there. Multiple drivers can fill at the same time with at multiple pumps, just like you would with a mag card or a chip key or anything like that. There are other prompts available. You can have a driver ID prompt, or if you're doing tag only, you can also have your drivers walk up to the fit to insert uh, mileage or engine hours from their vehicle. The extra prompts are just a way for you to verify mileage or engine hours if you're doing a tag only system, or also check who's driving the vehicle or fueling the vehicle actually. The accuracy of the GPS is pretty spot on. The only time you'll see any differences between the actual mileage traveled is going to be if you're traveling through long tunnels or something like that where you lose your GPS signal. The one thing with tunnels, it'll just give you a straight line distance from A to B where you entered and where you exited. So when you see a discrepancy is if you're in a long tunnel with a lot of turns. Otherwise, the GPS is giving you the actual distance traveled on the road all the time. The AVI system integrates inside the PB200 head and just plugs directly into our FSC3000 with Petronet. So currently it only integrates with our PB200. You could use a remote VIZ system to integrate with some of our older systems. You can run it with either PCMs with a true mechanical or DPC with hybrid or electronic pumps. It works with both electronic and mechanical dispensers. With a mechanical dispenser, you can use a PCM with the handle sense board that allows you to the system to see a, a handle lift and activate the RFN. With hybrid or electronic dispensers, you just use DPC. The system communicates via radio frequency. Uh, it's 900 megahertz here in the North America market. Uh, you can't use wireless Petronet with it due to interference between. The Viz wireless works at about 100 feet or so from the main PB200 terminal. The RFN's read range depends on the tuning you have on the tag ranges from about two and a half inches all the way up to about seven and a half inches. You can daisy chain up to four vizs together. Standard though is just to have one viz that'll, co that'll cover almost, almost all fueling areas that you'd see in the market. There's no maximum amount of fueling points per viz unit. Uh, that is still regulated by the FSC 3000. The VIZ is basically the brain behind the whole AVI system. It allows the tags to get authorized from our FSC 3000 and then also reaches out and grabs either engine hours or mileage from the VIDs. The VIZ collects all the data from the actual vehicle and then passes it through to our FSC where you will see on your Phoenix transactions that vehicle transaction. VIZ unit gets mounted inside the head of the PB200. The VIZ antenna is mounted on top of the PB200 through one of the top knockouts. There's about 40 different types of tags ranging from mini flex, flexible, specific truck tags, and then also some specialty tags. So the easiest way to tell which tag to use is just by measuring the diameter of the fuel inlet. That'll give you a good idea whether what size to use. The different types will be specific to more so what vehicle it is. Mini flexes are typically used with light duty or passenger vehicles. Flexibles can range all the way from a light duty or passenger vehicle up through heavy duty. Most of the specialty tags are for either trucks or applications where a normal ring tag wouldn't fit. The tags are installed around the fuel inlet. You install them either with a one-way screw or some of them are installed with epoxy. There's even one for trucks, specifically for side saddle tanks that is installed with shipping banding straps. The specialty tools that you use to install the tags are a ceramic screwdriver for tuning and a pneumatic drill for working around the fuel inlet. You fill the adjusting, adjustment screw with epoxy due to preventing the tag from breaking. You want to fill it with a fuel and water resistant epoxy so nothing is getting into the tag and ruining it. The epoxy is not included with your ring kit, but it's a standard fuel and water resistant epoxy such as JB Weld. 
If you're using the AVI system, you don't necessarily need a vid. It depends on the package you choose. So there's three different packages. Tag only requires no vid, as the only thing that gets mounted on the vehicle is the tag. If you're tracking engine hours or mileage, then you'll need a vid. The vid tracks engine hours using a cable harness that connects into either key on power or the alternator D plus terminal. The vid tracks mileage through the GOS unit, which has a GPS antenna that tracks via satellite. The vid gets installed behind a kick panel or any panel in the vehicle. It gets installed using 12 volt power from the vehicle that's constant and a ground. The vid sends data to the vis wirelessly through the 900 megahertz frequency. The antenna gets mounted on the, on the front windshield uh, vertically and just a clear line of sight. The GOS unit is what actually tracks your mileage uh, when you're tracking mileage with a vid. GOS stands for GPS Onboard Sending. The GOS unit goes through the vid and gets, that then gets sent over the radio frequency just like the engine hours. The RFN is basically what starts every transaction. So when you pick up the RFN, it'll get activated. Once the handle's lifted, it'll start searching for a tag, and once it finds that tag, it then will check if that tag's authorized for fuel or not. The RFN's mounted on every nozzle that you have on the site that you want capable of doing ABI. The LEDs on the RFN indicate to the driver what's going on, whether it's the RFN's been activated, it's searching for a tag, if it's found the tag, if the tag's authorized for fuel. Red means it's activated on the RFN LEDs. Yellow, you'll get a flashing yellow light when it's searching for the tag after the handle's lifted. Green obviously means the tag is authorized for fuel. If you lose the tag during a transaction, you'll see a flashing red and yellow light together. The standard, standard RFNs are compatible with 11A slash AP OPW nozzles and 7H OPW nozzles. The RFN is installed on a nozzle using set screws in the adapter and on the RFN. You use a two mil Allen wrench. The RFN is protected from weather by a rubber cover that gets mounted over the nozzle and the RFN along with a Viton gasket inside the RFN. Viton gasket is a gasket that is oil, and, oil fuel and water resistant. When you're installing the RFN, you need to open the case of the RFN to plug in the battery. You need to make sure though that when you're plugging that battery in, the wires are not getting pinched by the RFN cover. Tag writer is what allows you to program your tags and see what's going on at the site. It is the full-blown version of the software for our AVI system. Tag writer allows you to configure RFNs, tags, and vids. You need to marry the tag with a vid so when the driver comes to a fueling point and is doing a transaction, that tag number then gets sent out by the viz looking for a vid with that tag number married and then it can grab the appropriate engine hours or mileage from that vid. SiteWriter is a lesser version of TagWriter that allows you to do diagnostic work and also program RFNs. You cannot program vehicles with SiteWriter. You configure the AVI through either command line prompts or in artware. It allows you to both install the viz into the FSC and set up the RFNs on each of the individual pumps. To set up the RFNs in the FSC, you need to insert their specific serial numbers so that way they are matched up with a fueling point. The tag is treated the same as a card in our Phoenix system. To work with Phoenix though, the tag serial number needs, needs to be converted from a hexadecimal to decimal. You can either do that in the FSC, there is a prompt to convert numbers from a hexadecimal to decimal, or the easiest way is to insert your tag numbers into Excel and there is a simple hexadecimal to decimal conversion. You'll have issues with tags reading if you've set up an inappropriate read range when you're tuning the tag during installation. You can also sometimes see some interference, specifically if the tank is metal and the tag's been mounted behind a piece of metal. The other reason you sometimes see tags not reading is that the tag's not been authorized due to it not being in the FSC. You're able to break through the epoxy on the tag if you need to retune the tag using a flathead screwdriver. The things that could cause the viz not to communicate are if there's a Petronet error or if the viz is not installed into the FSC 3000. Engine hours or mileage wouldn't necessarily communicate if there's no tag programmed into the vid, so there would be nothing to actually send, or if the 
antenna is not mounted properly on the windshield so it can't communicate. Another reason the vid may not communicate is due to it not being properly powered, whether that be the vid is actually plugged into non-constant 12 volt power or if it's not being powered properly from the current, current 12 volt. If a tag stops reading in the middle of fueling, you can set up a delay that allows the RFN to try and refine the tag. If the delay runs out before the tag is found again by the RFN, the transaction ends. You can still fuel not using the AVI system, so you would be able to still fuel using chip keys or mag cards or whatever medium you're currently using at your site. Some specific vehicles may need to use our split RFNs due to their fuel pocket size. Split RFNs are a different design of the RFN where the battery is actually pushed to the back of the nozzle. When you're programming, you do need to write to, a, to the vid every time you do make a change. Just 